This is the Cervelo ZFS5, and in more ways than one, it has been quite the surprise. Now, this is the first full suspension mountain bike to come from a brand that we normally associate with drop bars. And it's no doubt a sharp looker, but is it any good? And how does it compare to the best XC bikes on the market? We've brought it here to Yakandanda in Victoria's high country to find out. The Cervelo ZFS5 is a lightweight XC bike that's designed to take on the likes of the Orbea Oys, the Scott Spark, and the Pivot Mach 4 SL. Like some of its competitors, the ZFS5 is available in two distinct variants. There's an XC version with 100mm of travel front and rear, and then we've got a more trail-oriented bike with 120mm travel fork and 115 at the rear. Both utilize exactly the same full carbon frame, which is claimed to be one of the lightest on the market at just 1,718 grams, including the shock. Now, if you're thinking the ZFS5 looks familiar, that's because it shares much of its DNA with the Santa Cruz Blur. Both brands are owned by Dutch conglomerate Pond Holdings, and that allows them to benefit from each other's engineering and manufacturing capabilities. As such, the ZFS5 uses the same single pivot suspension platform as the Blur, and indeed the kinematics and the pivot hardware are identical. The frame is unique to Cervelo, however, coming in over 200 grams lighter than the Blur, while also having different geometry. With the 120mm travel fork we've got here, the head angle comes in at a devilish 66.6 .6 degrees. The seat angle clocks in at 75.1 degrees, and the reach on our medium-sized test bike sits at 433 millimeters. Now with the 100mm travel fork, the head and seat angles will steepen by 1.2 degrees, and the reach increases to 430 45 millimeters. On the note of geometry, we're stoked to see Cervelo using scaled rear center sizing, and that varies from 432 to 440 millimeters throughout the size range. There are six models available in the Cervelo ZFS5 lineup, and prices will kick off at $7,800. Our test bike sits one step down from the top. This is the ZFS5 120XO axis model, and current price on this is 12 grand. This bike comes with Fox Performance Elite suspension with a 34 step cast fork and the new float shock. There's a SRAM XO transmission and level silver brakes. We've got a 125mm travel reverb axis dropper post and 780mm wide race face carbon bars. There's a reserve 28 XC wheel set and 2.4 inch wide Maxxis Recon tires. Confirmed weight for our Cervelo ZFS5 test bike is 11.52 kilos, and that's with the tire set up tubeless and without pedals. I reckon that's pretty impressive given the chunky tires, the dropper post, and the extra travel this bike is sporting. Now, if you'd like to know more about suspension setup, sizing, and how the ZFS5 compares to some of the competition, including the Scott Spark, there's a load more info in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. If you're keen to check it out, just click the link in the video description below. Now, I'll admit that I wasn't sure what to expect when I first laid hands on the Cervelo ZFS5. Any doubts I had soon vanished within the first ride, however. Indeed, this is is a very, very good XC bike. Rolling along the trail, the ZFS5 feels light, fast, and smooth. Some carbon frames can be quite stiff and wooden, but not this one. It's sprightly and it possesses a beautifully damped ride quality. It's also really quiet thanks to the XO transmission, the frame protection, and the well-managed cable routing. It's been a while since I've ridden such a stealthy bike, and boy, what a treat it is. There's also excellent sensitivity from the rear suspension. There's minimal stiction as the shock eases into its travel, delivering an impressively supple feel for an XC bike. Combined with the springy frame, the high volume tires, and the low profile rims, the ZFS5 sucks up chatter like an off-road vacuum cleaner. I've also been testing the Trek Supercaliber lately, which offers a very different ride quality with considerably more feedback from the trail. In comparison, the ZFS5 is way more compliant. The active suspension allows the rear wheel to follow the terrain and generate more grip, while also helping to fight fatigue on longer rides. Along with its modern cockpit, the low BB and slack head angle, this is a brilliant descender. It's got a really poppy and playful feel, and thanks to the low overall weight, minimal effort is required to get it airborne. There's plenty of support from the suspension, and that makes it a great bike to jump with. The weight distribution is nicely balanced, in part thanks to the scaled rear center lengths. It weaves through twisty single track with ease, and the relatively short chainstays allow you to cut a tight arc on uphill switchbacks. 
Despite the suspension's inbuilt traction control, there's still a good amount of snap to its pedaling performance. The blue climb switch is useful whenever you're riding on bitumen or long sections of buff fire road, but it's not needed when you're attacking the trail, with the rear shock stiffening up under purposeful pedaling inputs. What I really like is that there's just enough anti-squat to keep the bike feeling responsive when you're pushing hard, but not so much as to interfere with the action of the suspension. Indeed, it is a very smooth bike when you're pedaling through chunky rock gardens with very little feedback coming through the pedals. No, it isn't as snappy as the Super Calibre or the Epic World Cup, but the rougher the trail is, the better the Cervelo gets. Compared to those two bikes, there's noticeably less kick from the rear wheel when you're power wheeling up over rocky ledges on a technical climb. The ZFS5 offers considerably more grip and comfort, and that allows you to stay seated for longer. As for downsides, well in all honesty, not much has troubled the Cervelo ZFS5 on the trails that I've ridden it on. It's performed exceptionally well everywhere, and that's left me struggling to pick any holes in its overall performance. It could benefit from some burlier rubber for riding really rocky terrain, and I did find I was pushing the limits of the lightweight Fox Fork on some of the rowdier trails I took it on. A 34 Grip 2 or a RockShox Pike set at 120mm of travel would be a pretty wicked addition for those who are pursuing maximum descending performance. On the other side of the coin, serious XC racers will of course want a remote lockout. Now unfortunately the 100mm travel XC builds miss out on the dropper post, but they do come with a three position twist lock which allows you to adapt the suspension on the fly. You can also expect the smaller fork to reduce weight and the steeper head angle to sharpen up the steering response through tight single track. Personally, I like the extra traction, comfort and versatility that the longer travel package brings to the ZFS5. Perhaps the ultimate do it all setup then would be the bigger fork and shock cabled up to that twin lock remote. Along with its on-trail performance, we've also been pleasantly surprised by this bike's overall value for money. Indeed, you're getting a better parts package here compared to an equivalent Supercalibre, Epic World Cup or Mach 4 SL. The components are all top-notch too. The reverb dropper is fast and slick, the XO transmission is bulletproof, and the level brakes offer great feel. For those after more braking power, there is room to fit up to 180mm rear rotor if needed. All the contact points are superb, and we like that Cervelo has chosen to spec the older axis controllers rather than the new pod controllers. We prefer the ergonomics and the lighter action, and there are no clearance issues thanks to the slim foam grips. Of course, the wireless setup lends to the incredibly clean cockpit, which has been accentuated by the stealth brake levers and the headset cable routing. It's all well managed too, with netting around the fork steerer to reduce rub on the brake hose, and a foam insulation tube preventing rattle inside the frame. The reserve wheel set also deserves a shout out for its compliant ride quality, the serviceable hubs, and those excellent clog-free Fillmore tubeless valves. Along with the non-proprietary shock, the threaded BB, and the excellent pivot hardware, the ZFS5 is a nicely put together bike that should be pretty easy to live with in the long term. As for our verdict on the Cervelo ZFS5, well, this is one of the most fun, capable, and well-rounded XC bikes we have ever tested. Being so light, of course it goes uphill like an absolute rocket, but what's really blown me away is how good it is on the descents. The progressive geometry and supple suspension give it a load of high-speed control, while the compliant chassis and wheels mean it's remarkably smooth to ride over chunky terrain. It's quiet too, which is more than can be said from many of the bikes we've tested of late. Of course, Cervelo has benefited greatly from its relationship with Santa Cruz, and indeed the ZFS5 shares a lot in common with the Blur. While some of Cervelo's fans may have wished for something more exotic, we're glad that it decided to stick with a proven recipe. Those shared resources have resulted in a surprisingly good value package for a premium XC bike and at the end of the day the proof is in the riding and I'm happy to report that the riding is very good on the ZFS5. Now as mentioned before the full review of this bike is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. Just click the link in the video description below to check it out. If you've got any questions for me drop those into the comments below otherwise I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!